thank you all for coming here. As was mentioned, I'm going to be talking about taking the pain out of onboarding today. Um, I've been at the UW for the past year and a half, and from the time I started to the time now, I think I've smoothed out the onboarding process a little bit for my department, former department, because we're all kind of matrixing into one pool now. But it was a long road to get here or get there. So I'm going to share that with all of you today. But first, I'm going to bring you a little back into time. If this thing wants to uh, go. If not, I could just press this arrow or actually uh, click it here if it's advancing. There. OK, we're all good now. I'll just pretend to use the clicker. So anyway, take you back a few days, weeks, months, years, decades. Think back to the first day you were onboarded here at UW-Madison. How was the communication before your first day? Was everything in place for your first day? Who did you engage with? Were there any like red flags waving where things were just kind of awry and you were thinking, what have I gotten into in this IT kind of cluster? And did you ever think like at this moment I felt angry, I felt nervous, I was feeling very anxious. So for me, go back about a year and a half, almost two years ago, my communication before my first day was pretty good. Um, I actually got almost like, I almost got COVID. So that my first day I was supposed to go on campus, I'm like, I might not be able to go. I got a test beforehand because this is 2022, but everything was good. Was everything in place before my first day? No, I didn't have computer access for about the first, I think, week and a half. So basically, I was just kind of overseeing my coworkers and jumping in on their daily calls and thinking, this is a lot of stuff that goes on in SMH. <laughs> what is happening here? Who did I engage with? Um, all my awesome coworkers on the team, a few faculty members, students, so on and so forth. Were there any red flags waving? The one red flag that was waving was other people at the time were being onboarded, just like me. New people starting, new faculty starting, new staff, students, international people, everyone coming in. And they would arrive and we would have their supervisors or people just kind of in different roles being like, hey, where's their computer? Hey, where's their account? Hey, they're ready to meet you today. And everyone in my little party of people was like, we're not prepared because we weren't told you were coming. We weren't told what kind of equipment you need. We weren't really told anything, except now we have a slightly angry supervisor kind of breathing down our neck saying, we need equipment now and we're not prepared. And so, whoops, now I guess the clicker works. So at those moments, I felt like, oh, this is a big problem in this department. Why is this a problem? How can we solve this problem efficiently because I was going just right in. I was seeing like heads on, like this is an issue. Obviously it happened with me and I'm IT, but I think it's larger than an IT issue. So over the past year and a half, I've done my digging. I've done my quote unquote research, um, emailing people, messaging people on MS Teams, a little bit of WebEx here, just talking to everyone I know, part of SMPH Radiology and also our um, HR folks, I like to call them. And it's like, okay, I think I have this down now and now I'll give it on to you. So with this whole thing, I call it the onboarding perfecta trifecta. I've been saying like perfecta trifecta now for like 15 years. I just like how it rolls off the tongue. So you might be wondering, what is this onboarding perfecta trifecta? It's kind of simple and then I'll kind of dig into it a little bit. So at the top of the pyramid, not necessarily number one, um, is you and your IT team. Of course, when you have new users that need equipment, that need accounts, that need access to certain software, need certain licenses, everything under that IT kind of overhead, that's you and your team. Whether your team is one person or if it's like a huge party of people, which I guess SMPH kind of is now, you and your IT team, it gets on you, be like, okay, where's their computer? Their computer isn't set up. Okay, we got a problem here. And then it kind of goes from there. But the other two parts of this trifecta triangle here 
on the left side, we have the department HR. So when I was trying to piece this all together, HR was my first contact to go to. The first HR person that kind of went through radiology, um, I'll just say her name, her name was Heather. She was fantastic. Uh, she knew what to do. She knew how to like assign different roles to people. She knew what they needed. And she was pretty good at communication, but then it just kind of got lost in the tracks. And then we lost Heather. And then all heck <laughs> broke loose where literally I'd just be, you know, working on a computer and all of a sudden we'll get those emails saying, hey, there's a new user account. It's being created. I'll email the supervisor and say, hey, when was this person's first day? Oh, it was two weeks ago. Well, that makes us look really great. And it doesn't just make IT look great, but also just makes UW look, you know, not great at all and the whole department it kind of spouts from there so first thing i targeted not targeted i went to hr to kind of see what was going on the other part of this is the supervisor or the superior of the new hire so this is kind of like i don't say an afterthought of hr but i would say i'll dig into it a little bit more that building the relationships with supervisors and superiors with other like new hires um, it's really critical because once you kind of build that relationship and that little bit of that trust, um, then when you have new hires come in, you'll kind of know what to expect. You'll know what that supervisor is expecting or they want for that new user. So, so I'm go to the next slide here. So, yes? I have a yeah. So this is what I'm going to talk about in this slide here. Awesome. So when I was on board, I didn't have like I talked to HR like they sent me my like emails to like my Gmail or something. That's all I got. But once things started to like come to light to me where it's like, oh, nothing, nothing. No one communicates here. The one thing with HR or few things here, you have to get organized. So I reached out to them via email, via, via Microsoft Teams, via WebEx for a few people. And I just started talking to them and say, hey, I know you know this is a problem, I hope. I think we can solve this. We just have to get organized and start actually talking to each other. And they were pretty responsive. And so what we did, we had a step-by-step -step documentation. Basically, when a new hire comes into the department, um, I didn't know what was happening. You know, eventually I'd see like ticket come in for a new person or their supervisor puts in a ticket. I'd be like, okay. But I didn't really know what the HR steps were. So HR, one of our HR contacts laid out a document of how they exactly intake a new hire and what, go, what they have to go through before I'd see like a ticket come in. Um, second point is having a meeting with those power players, those key HR contacts. I know people are really busy. But again, I think this is really critical because just having that face to face connection again building relationships is really vital, especially when it comes to new hiring. Um, and then the last point is smart sheet form or a Google form so when I was talking to our one HR contact her name is Raquel she's pretty pretty cool. Um, initially I made a Google form that we would have supervisors or other folks fill out for a new hire and so that would automatically go into a Google sheet where it'd be like laying out like this new hire is going to be remote so they're not going to need an office but they need a laptop and I want MATLAB on their computer and I want Adobe Creative Cloud on their computer it'd be all laid out just for me and that was fantastic eventually that went to a smart sheet form which now goes into a smart sheet sheet um, and so we have that going and all this kind of leads into streamlining the onboarding process. Um, what I said about that Excel sheet or the smart sheet sheet, um, once the supervisor fills that out, I can see everything, almost everything the new user wants before their first day. Um, and so I'm not thrown like, oh, I didn't know this was happening. Or, oh, I didn't know we were getting a new hire right now. Um, with this process, like I said in the first comment, I gained insight to other working parts. I think it's easy to point the finger and blame like, oh, it's HR, they didn't do something. Or, oh, it's this over here, they're not doing something. Oh, it's a supervisor. Whereas like, when you actually know the process that HR is going through, 
then you wouldn't be quick to blame to be like, oh, this is happening because HR is stuck in this process, or this is happening because there's this little hiccup with HR and they're hiring. So it's nice to have that. Um, also with building bridges and contacts, again, I didn't talk to HR at all really before this. Sometimes I would talk to that awesome person, Heather, but I knew she was like super ultra busy. And so I didn't really want to bug her too much, but now because onboarding is something I've really taken on in our department, I have no problem paying two, three, four HR people other on teams. If it's a bigger issue, then I'll bring it up in an email and being like, hey, I have a question. Hey, what's going on with this hire? And so there's that. And also with this, like I mentioned before, it has me or I can have access for the new hires information before their start date, um, which again, I think is pretty vital. Going back to that smart sheet and that Google form, if you're wondering what kind of question should I ask, a few of them that I have on mine is, who is filling out this form? Because sometimes it's not just a supervisor. It could be like a PI, it can be like a director, an admin, someone along the chain. That's really important because if you need to ask or reach out for questions, you know who to contact. Um, is this new hire remote, um, hybrid, or 100% on-site and location? Obviously, for us in SMP uh, radiology or IT, we'd be like, okay, you should have a desktop. Okay, you should have a laptop. Oh, I know this person, this lab usually uses a MacBook. So I like to have that all in my head. And also location, because space is such an issue, it's nice to know, okay, this person's gonna be sitting here. I'll walk by the office and say, hey, there's already a computer there. Are they actually going to sit there? <laughs> so I like covering my bases. Um, kind of special circumstance is how is this equipment going to be funded? Um, depending on the hire, we need that funding string. Um, does the new hire need any special software packages? For me, I just like being prepared from the get-go, and so I try to prep their device as much as I can. Um, like I was saying before, if they need MATLAB, they need Python with the Anaconda, if they need Visual Studio Code, any of that, boom, on their, on their laptop or their desktop. So day one that they are here, they're ready to work. Woohoo! Um, and is, this one is, I think, a nice one that uh, HR and I slowly added, is a new hire mir mirroring another user's setup. And what is their title? For this, I really like to use it because when I'm seeing that form and I see in the column that they're mirroring someone else's access, that's great. I could just grab the computer Oh, it's part of these 80, 80 groups. Awesome. Okay, this person's part of this email list, these calendars. Awesome. I could do all of that. So that's why I like that one. And then, as of course, everything is not perfect from the get go. HR, HR and I, we sent like a few tests to a few like supervisors at the very beginning that we knew we trusted. Um, and, be, and because of that, we added additional questions. We did some clarification. And so, after all that testing, I think we have a pretty good sheet now. So when working with supervisors, it's a little bit, I guess, easier. Um, you have to set expectations. Um, for my department, we work heavily with UW Health. Honestly, I'm on the UW Health network with my main work laptop. And so a lot of them have expectations of they could do everything they want on their UW Health device. And that is absolutely not true. <laughs> and so you kind of have to set those expectations to the supervisors like, I'm sorry that I can't install Autodesk on your UW Health laptop. It's not approved by UW Health yet. There's a process, but it's very long. So instead, maybe you can look at this alternative or maybe you could try this software. Going along with that, communication is key. Now, if you don't tell the supervisor, they can't have Autodesk, or you just kind of just shut the supervisor out and they're kind of wondering, hey, what's happened to my new hire? They're gonna get a little bit angry, they can go talk to other people and it just kind of bubbles up. So as much as like communication might be kind of tough at times, um, especially I've definitely have had that. I've had that happen today <laughs> with new people, ha like new people onboarding, communication is absolutely vital to this process, especially with a new person. You want to make a good impression. The whole department does. You just got to talk to them. Um, with supervisors, once you get to know them, get to talk to them a little bit more, uh, figure out their workflows. Because I've been doing this for about years now, 
there's definitely some labs that I know. It's like, oh, you're being hired by this lab and you're working with this PI. I totally know what you need. You need a MacBook. You need Adobe Creative Cloud. You need some sort of DICOM viewer. I got that going. And so really, once you work with the supervisors, you get a sense of what they need, which is really nice. And then sometimes you do want to include that new hire in communications. Um, for me, it's really dependent on the person. When I'm scheduling a new orientation, sometimes I'll ask the supervisor, do you want me to schedule it? Should I just reach out to them? Sometimes they want to do it just for like a new hire themselves, or it's like, oh yeah, just, just email them. And I'm like, okay, I'll set up a time. <laughs> So, with that said, there can be some potential hiccups. One of them that happens a lot, not a lot I would say, because people are pretty nice now, is supervisor or HR is unresponsive. It's more on the supervisor's side that they're unresponsive. HR, I know how to kind of hunt them down on the Microsoft Teams now. So with the supervisor, if they start being unresponsive, I reach out to honestly like my supervisor because sometimes he can give a little bit more edge, a little bit more urgency than I can. Sometimes I reach out to other people. It's like, hey, do you know what's happening with so-and-so? I'm trying to like get to them. So that is something that can happen. With that uh, sheet that um, HR and I have done that we give to supervisors to fill out the form, if the supervisor doesn't fill it out correctly, then it's kind of more on them instead of IT or HR now. So I guess we have that for us. But honestly, just reach out to other people like, I guess more quote unquote power players that can maybe give them a nudge. Sometimes you have unclear wants from the supervisor where it's like, hey, I want this person to have a computer. Great. And I'll have to say, do they need a desktop or a laptop? Are they gonna be a remote or hybrid? And they'll be and they'll email me back, that's great. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you have to be a little bit more clear with their communication. Sometimes it does take three or four times to really get things across, especially when it comes to software packages that they can't have. I like to tell my new hires a lot when I'm onboarding them. The first thing I say is, what questions do you have about this device? Sometimes they'd be like, oh, can I have this software? Oh, can I have this software? And sometimes I like think, I'm like, did your supervisor not tell you you could or couldn't have this? So. Sometimes there's unclear wants, but I try to do the best for my users, especially given that I'm part of the most, like 90% UW health environment. I try to do my best. One thing that is I put on here is, like I guess these last two things are kind of a little situational, I suppose. Sometimes the start date is too close. Like I was saying way in the past, before I had this system, I get those emails saying, hey, so-and-so starting today. Oh, they're starting in two days. Where's their stuff? And I would just look at my email and just be, they're, they're not going to be ready. <laughs> so again, kind of going back to setting those expectations, you have to go to the supervisor and say, hey, I know so-and-so is starting in two days, but we don't have their credentials yet. I have to still like find a device for them. It's going to be a few days. Again, communication is absolutely critical. And so it just, you just have to lay it out. I'm sorry, this is how the system is. It is slow as heck. <laughs> um, the last thing, I don't think it's ever happened, but it might happen to other people. It happened to me a lot when I worked in K-12. Lack of equipment. We would get new students and we would have no Chromebooks. Sorry, kid, you can't do your homework. And so if you have a lack of equipment, I guess just kind of scurry what you can, kind of see if there's any kind of funding you can get, if there's any devices that shouldn't, that you could probably reuse, or if someone has like too many devices, like why does the person have like three or four devices? See if you can get one back. So we are here to the day of onboarding someone. Woohoo! So you can make it the best experience by Hopefully, being on time <laughs> if you're traveling to meet the new user or if you're going to meet someone at the office. Of course, you want to make a good first impression, so don't be late. It's okay if the user's late. I've had a user late one time for about two hours, but it was okay because they actually made it to their onboarding. We scheduled it beforehand, like I said, either through the supervisor themselves, whomever. Just, just be on time. Guy, also with that, just be warm and welcoming. For me, I just say, welcome to UW. Hope you find it good here. Did you like move from somewhere? 
do you like the supervisor? Do you like what the kind of work you're going to be doing? And if I really know the lab, I'd be like, oh, the super, the so and so is great. I know kind of work they do. It's pretty cool. So just be warm and welcoming, and then being prepared. I like to bring my own laptop or my work device just in case. Um, there's cop, there's hiccups like, oh, you're supposed to be added to this um, AD group. Let me make that change quick. Or if they want to see me like install a software package directly, it's like, okay, I'm adding your computer to the group. I'm going to deploy it. It's all good. Um, I have a printed how-to sheet, and I'll get back to that in a bit that I give to the user after my session. Um, make sure you have the user's device ready. Um, the one thing that happens with us a few times is if we have a desktop, and we try to do networking because, again, we're UW Health. It gets a little bit clunky where we can't just plug into the Ethernet and it's like, all right, it's ready to go. We have to make like IP reservations and make sure it's actually like on the correct network. And so just make sure everything is okay with the user's device, I suppose. And then knowledge. So this is something that comes in time. My first few orientations, especially my first faculty orientation, I was pretty clueless. They'd ask me questions and I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Ask someone else. But now if someone asks me something, I'm pretty usually knowledge I'm pretty knowledgeable with it. If it's someone that's working for a lab or I know has like coworkers, one thing I'd say is ask your coworkers, ask your colleagues. They are the best person with the knowledge that you need. Like reach out to those peers, make those relationships. You're new here make some friends. Um, so I think knowledge is really key. Even if you don't know it, you can ask someone else. And so after that, after you onboard someone, I like to email the supervisor or just like swing by their office and be like, all right, I met with so-and-so. It was really awesome. We got this, this, this done. We checked all these boxes. Or I say, okay, onboarded so-and-so. I still got to check on X, Y, Z, again, making those clear communications. Um, sometimes I send a follow-up email to the new hire just in case they had any other questions or if they wanted to make sure they were added to another AD group or if they needed like another sheet on how to do something. And then I think these are all kind of like, hopefully you know, try not to come off as condescending. Um, sometimes, you know, with like new people, you get some, you know, not IT or tech savvy people. so. You'll be like, okay, open edge or something, and they'll be, which icon is edge? And, you know, you just have to take it slow. You don't want to be like, it's that icon right there. You just, it's, you know, it's their first day. It's kind of chill, or it's their first week. It's kind of chill. Being unprepared. Again, it's the worst thing where you just kind of rush into something, and you're, oh, I don't know what's happening. Oh, this isn't set up. Again, it makes you look bad, department look bad, IT look bad. Also, just don't confuse the user. There's a lot of things that kind of happen in our system. There's a lot of things they don't know. It's their first week. So just kind of keep it a little bit mellow and put everything on a how-to sheet. You might be wondering what's on this sheet. So a little bit of mine that you can't really see. I have like username and temporary password, which they change, so it's not on paper. Um, I have steps on how to change their password, if they ever need to get to their H drive or a network drive. A important thing I have there for, because we're on the UW Health Network, I tell them to turn on their computer once every three weeks, otherwise it won't get updates. And for UW Health, it will fall off Active Directory and SCCM, and then it just gets really messy from there. I um, also have important contacts, one of them being, of course, the Duo at Help Desk, because sometimes people put in tickets like, I have a question about Duo. I can answer your question, but if you have like an actual problem with Duo, I can't help you, so go to Duo. <laughs> um, and of course, it says SNPH Radiology, SNPH IIT. There's all of our contact info right there. Yes? Yes. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, and so there's all our contact, and I, there's also, it's like, why do you contact us? You don't contact us for everything, but you can, and then we'll just redirect you to their correct places. And then we have this chart that I like to put at the bottom of our sheet of who to contact me to help. Because there's not just us at former Radiology IT, there's PAX, which is the Enterprise Imaging. There's HealthLink, which is UW Health, because they're a whole system. We've also got social media, web development, and informatics. This is a true story. 
one time we got a ticket in and they said, hey, Mal, look at a picture of my dog. Isn't he cute? Thanks. And they put that in our ticket system. <laughs> I'm like, this is a really great photo of your dog. I absolutely love it. Send it to our social media. Get it on the newsletter. <laughs> like, that's not IT. But, you know, I'll, I'll take a picture of a dog. So I have all this on a sheet that I print out to the user, give it to them on the first day. And so they have something physical that like they need IT help. They don't really want to contact their supervisor because they're new. They don't want to be like, oh, I'm asking too many questions. They can always ask us at Real GID or they can contact UW Health, Enterprise Imaging or the Dewitt Help Desk. It's mostly just us. So at the end of the day, you're onboarding a new person. Not everything is going to be perfect, but with this system that I created, I try to make it as perfect and seamless as I can. Um, again, at the end of the day, it's their first day, you're onboarding a new person. And I just say, just like, take it easy. It's nothing to really worry about unless something is like ultra bad, but I guess nothing's ever been ultra bad with me. So. It's just the day, another day in the life of IT, just onboarding a new person. So, with that, is there any questions? Yes. Okay. Hi. Um, you mentioned um, as you got to know different labs and, oh, I know that this lab needs this, this lab needs that, that kind of thing. Um, how have you or however how how is that documented um you know you hate to think tomorrow i'm not here and you know then someone else has to reinvent the wheel so are you documenting or what can you share about that yes so with documenting different labs and everything we have started a spreadsheet for our different labs because in radio in smph radiology i'll just say that specifically we do have like a number of labs i want to say upwards of like 10. and so we do have a sheet of like hey this is the pi this is everyone on the team these are all the devices that they have um when someone is new to the lab this is all the software that they should need from day one these are all the email not really email moves, groups more like um, AD groups or network groups they need to be part of. So we do have that all laid out on basically an Excel sheet. Um, and we have that shared in SharePoint. And so anyone can make edits because yeah, people leave and then people come and go. And it's confusing at times when it's like, oh, this person's leaving uh, today? Because that happens too <laughs> with offboarding. It's like, oh, we need their equipment back right now. <laughs> so good question, thank you. Hi, Mal. Um, Scott Winger from Do It Technical Services. I sent you a chat just now with two uh, links to uh, two onboarding documents that are for IT people campus wide. Um, you might find them to be of use. Um, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, maybe you want to show those hyperlinks. They are uh, a lot of people in this room might even have participated in putting them together. Um, my group uh, became the stewards of them and we just refreshed them. They're excellent. So if you're responsible for uh, onboarding new people, take what Mal has told you with, you know, that's good stuff, but also maybe consider uh, looking at those two documents. If you want to link to those, just see me afterwards. And I'll tell, like, thank you for that. I will say, I want to say SNPH, I don't want to say we're a special snowflake, but I feel like SNPH, like even like radiology, like I said, we're 90, 95% on the UW Health Network. We're so just not sheltered from everyone, but it's just like, we hear everything from far away, far away land. So I'll definitely look at those. And thank you so much. As you went through this process, did this force your uh, trifecta to go through and create like SLAs or MOUs for each other on what's acceptable in terms of lead time for different things, accounts? computers, things like that. Yeah, so basically when we create these forms and everything, of course, we want to make sure we didn't have any like sensitive information. Like I definitely don't need to like know everything about the new hire. Um, a lot of the process, I would say like half of the process goes through UW Health. And so we have to wait on them a lot for um, <laughs> getting their accounts created. But there's definitely a lot of like UW Madison stuff that is as well. Um, I guess, just because I don't know lingo, what does MOE mean? Oh, like memorandum of understanding. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So definitely, I mean, I talk to HR every single day. It's like, okay, this is happening with this person. Like, for example, today, it's like, oh, this person's account was deactivated in UW Health. It's just telling that to HR and being like, you have, we have to be up front with this person and be like, it's really just communication in a nutshell. And with HR, like, depending on the situation, I could talk just like a little, <coughs> not a little, like the assistant, or sometimes I do have to go up to like our main director of HR and be like, okay, this is, this is a big problem. So there's definitely like understanding now, whereas before it's like we didn't want to talk with each other, I suppose. Or is it anything just as literal as we need 10 days? Yeah, sometimes it is like, oh, we're waiting on UW Health for their account. It might, buy, it might be three or four weeks. That's how it is. <laughs> Hello. How did you, I guess, not socialize, but how do you like get the word out that this is a thing? How do you uh, talk about expectations? If a group takes a long time, like how would you talk about that? Do you have point contacts? I guess, like what's the approach of getting people on board to the onboarding process? Awesome question. So basically, HR and I, HR and I we just eventually just like rolled it out because we get new hires, new hire notices almost every single day. And so at the beginning, we're like, okay, we're gonna test out this form. And so HR, because they know who the supervisor is or the admin contact, we're like, hey, we're trying out this form now please share it out and please share it with other supervisors, PI. So eventually the word got out and eventually like at first it was pretty slow on responses, but right now I'm getting responses once or twice a day because we're just hiring that many people. Um, so it was really on HR and pushing that out. I don't think it's on our intranet yet just because I mean, it obviously I think it could be um, just so it's really easy for any, I, that's the thing. I don't want any anyone on our internet to get access and be like, oh, what's this nice sheet? Um, because we do kind of not take it seriously, but it's like a good point of reference. So it's eventually just like the word in the grapevine. Of course, um, if we're waiting on a supervisor or someone to fill it out, again, I'll just like shoot them an email, shoot them a Teams message, shoot them a WebEx. I'll ask my supervisor if they're better by text because some people are, <laughs> I'll give them a call. Um, sometimes I page people. So basically it's just running them down and being like, we're doing this now. This is, if you want this new person to be onboarded from the get go, this is the system to do. And with that, we're gonna call time. We're a little bit over actually. Um, thank you, Mel, for sharing all this information. Um, I'm sure she would be happy to answer more questions if you wanna ask her or send her a note. Thank you everyone. And you're off to your next uh, meeting. <laughs>